Let's look at the concept map for the semester. In week 1, 2, 3 and 4, we covered critical thinking. We finished with stereotyping and I hope that what we saw regarding stereotyping made you feel like you wanted to take some sort of action. And if that's the case, that's wonderful because this video is dedicated to breaking stereotypes, the issue and importance of breaking stereotypes. In terms of stereotype, we focused on racial framing and I would like to add to what I already said that uh, racial framing is not only morally wrong, but I believe that it is extremely harmful to people, so psychologically harmful to people as well. This concept map represents what we will be doing in the next couple of weeks. So, we stopped here in the previous one and I would like to explain, yes, the importance of breaking stereotypes for the well-being of people. And I will give you three different examples to try to explain why I think it is important to break stereotypes so that people can feel good. The importance of breaking stereotypes for people's well-being. I would like to share with you a couple of paragraphs written by a student in the intercultural communication class. And the student is focusing on the negative impact of stereotypes related to appearances. When I was a third year student in high school, I broke up with my boyfriend. We had been together for two years. The reason why he broke up with me was that my behavior had become too friendly, like friends, not lovers. Actually, my friends said, you're like a boy, powerful, cheerful and strong. We had been together for such a long time that I didn't hide myself. I laughed loudly, sometimes I didn't put makeup on when we went on a date. However, this was me. After I broke up with him, I tended to lose confidence, to hide my personality. I tried to be a modest and cute girl. I studied a lot about makeup. I spent a lot of money to get beautiful. When I watched the handsome suit, I changed my mind. I know that most people want to be more beautiful or handsome because many people focus on the person who has perfect appearance I've never seen an ugly person on the cover of a magazine. Like in this movie, if I become a top model, I can get much money, a handsome boyfriend, and have a perfect life. But when I tried to hide my personality, I lost my reason for living. This movie told me, live as yourself, and now I can love my personality. So first off, Please be kind, this is a Japanese student's writing, so her English isn't perfect, but I hope you could feel the power of her feelings and especially the impact of appearances on her. So she's, she was struggling with the stereotype of cute girl. So a cute girl is a girl who wears makeup, is beautiful, is not powerful, and doesn't laugh loudly. Because of this cute girl stereotype, not only did she lose her confidence because of the breakup, but also she tried to hide her real personality. And by doing this, she says that she lost the reason for living, which um, put in other words, makes it sound like she would have been willing to die or commit suicide. I am interpreting there, but Still, this to me feels really scary. So thankfully, she realized that she could live as herself, as who she was, thanks to the movie Handsome Suit. So yes, stereotypes can be very harmful, can make people think it is not worth living. 
In Japan, we have the stereotype of the cute girl, and if we think in terms of Western standards, well, the stereotype of the cute girl is similar to um, the standards of beauty that you can see in magazines or movies. In this case, I'd like to share with you a story called The Photograph. It's um, a so short story that belongs to Cries from the Heart and it's written by Jennifer Bassett. A teenager has just finished looking at the clothes in Vogue, an expensive fashion magazine. She sees the photograph under the heading Starving Africa. Her parents are from Africa. She herself was born in school in America, watching American TV, American films, and has never traveled out of America. She's uncomfortable with photographs like these. She remembers her classmates in school who joke about starving Africans. She isn't African in that kind of way, but she isn't truly American either. When she was younger, Cinderella, Snow White, and all the other girls and princesses in the Disney movies didn't look like her. When she was older and became interested in fashion, the models on the magazine covers didn't look like her either. Then the, magazine, the magazines found out that Africa had beautiful women. A Nigerian model is in the latest copy of Vogue, dressed in blue and thin, so thin. The teenager feels the fat at the top of her legs. She wants to be thin like the model. She wants to wear jeans that are like a second skin. She wants a photograph of herself with cool and smiling eyes like the Nigerian model. She's, she's careful about what she eats and if she eats too much, she puts her finger down her throat to make herself sick. Even though the photograph is a fiction, it's a story written by someone I believe it truly captures how someone may feel when they're watching movies, and in this case, movies for children. I am also worried about what you see in Disney films, and here I have added um, some pictures of the Disney princesses. And if you look at it, yes, indeed, they wouldn't look like an African-American young girl, um, maybe except for Jasmine, all these girls have very white skin. But it's not just a skin color issue. And I'd like here to share a bit of a more personal um, experience. I am blessed with two nieces. And here is my oldest nieces. I am covering her face for her own privacy. And as you can see, she has some very curly hair. Well. You might find them beautiful, but when she was about three and a half, she actually hated them. I will always remember the day when she was brushing them furiously, trying to get rid of the curls, and looking very sad when the curls would come back. When I asked her, why are you doing this? She said, well, princesses don't have curls. So now I know some Disney princesses have kind of curly hair or very curly hair, but you have to admit it's not the majority. I felt terrible for her and I told her that her hair were beautiful and that she should be proud of them because um, her own father had this type of hair. She was not quite convinced, but thankfully as she got older, she actually um, learn to love her curly hair. So after the children movies, then we have magazines. And yes, in the photograph, um, it says when she was older and became interested in fashion, the models on the magazine covers didn't look like her either. So let me show you a screenshot that I just took. So I went on Google and I typed cover fashion magazine and this is uh, what I got. So a lot of covers from fashion magazines. And if you look 
carefully, you will realize that there are almost no dark-skinned women. Out of 55 pictures, you have Beyonce here, Zoe here, and here you have Rihanna, and I believe again here Beyonce. So out of 55 covers, on a random search, you get four women with darker skin. So yes, indeed, I can understand why the character in the photograph felt that people on the fashion magazines don't look like her. Western standards of beauty did diversify. Um, they became a bit more open and again in the story it says then the magazines found out that Africa had beautiful women. So yes, at some point uh, women with darker skin became a bit more popular. And let me show you one picture. But if uh, Western standards of beauty became more racially diversified, uh, they are still controlled by the skinny standard. What I mean by that is that to be on a cover, most of the time you have to be really skinny. And this is again something we find in the story um, when Jennifer Bassett writes, a Nigerian model is on the latest copy of Vogue, dressed in blue and thin, so thin. The teenager feels the fat at the top of her legs. She wants to be thin, like the model. The next picture you will see will um, probably help you visualize um, what thin means in the fashion industry. This is not a model from Nigeria. She was actually uh, French with a background from Guinea, but um, for me, the size of her, her arms are a good example of what uh, thin means in the fashion industry. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong about being thin, but the impact that this standard has on others is pretty sad. Here is what Jennifer Bassett wrote in the photograph. She wants to wear jeans that are like a second skin. She wants a photograph of herself with cool and smiling eyes like the Nigerian model. She's careful about what she eats, and if she eats too much, she puts her finger down her throat to make herself sick. So basically here we see that people who want to be thin are willing to make themselves sick, I mean to vomit, so that the food will not get in their body and maybe make them slightly bigger. I hope that you understand why for me breaking stereotypes especially when they're related to appearances, is important. My last example connected to the well-being of people uh, relates to gender bias. It is still connected to appearances, but I wanted to focus a little bit more on the gender aspect. This is what a student wrote about her project for this class, actually, in 2014. I want to break the stereotype related to clothes and gender. I hope that the idea that a man should look masculine and a woman should look feminine disappears. I think that people should choose their true self without worrying about gender. This drawing shows people who have chosen their true self in the upper part and people who are following gender stereotypes in the lower part. So here is the picture in question. So in the upper part, if we look first on uh, the right, we see a girl looking pretty girly and holding um, maybe a piece of clothing that looks a bit, I don't know, maybe masculine. And then she's wearing jeans, boots, and the top that she was holding. On the left side, you see a man uh, holding a teddy bear and you also see the teddy bear behind him while he's talking with his friends. So these are the people who chose their true self.
Now, if we look at the picture upside down, um, this is what the student was mentioning. Yes, she is looking at a girly outfit here, but also at the more maybe boyish looking. But in the end, she chose to go for the girly outfit. Then on the right side, you see that the boy is looking at the teddy bear, but clearly not, um, I'm guessing, maybe buying it. And then later on, we see him in his room without a teddy bear. So these people are following gender stereotypes. A boy should be manly and not have a teddy bear, and a girl should look girly and wear skirts. This is the end of the flipped activity.